What's going on guys? In this video, we're going to talk about Whoop's stress monitor. And one thing we do on this channel is a deep dive into the why behind anything that a company releases. So Whoop released a stress monitor, why they do it, and any other sort of research and different perspective I can give that I've uncovered through doing my own research. So firstly, Whoop stress monitor, just a overview, is a zero to three scale of your daily in real time stress of the day. And what they do is they use the movement within the device to make sure that they're separating physical stresses from mental stresses. It's not an overall novel idea, something that Garmin has had and they acquired through First Beat Analytics and they've always had a stress monitor. But Whoop is very careful in their verbiage, which I find super fascinating. And if I put my lawyer hat on, I 100% agree. They are the first fitness tracker to have real-time stress monitoring analytics and immediate intervention through breath work. That is something very careful that I'm sure their marketing and legal department worked on as far as the verbiage in their press release. Because I mentioned earlier, Garmin has had a stress monitor. And if you've ever had an Apple watch, you've gotten that annoying notification that it's time to breathe. And Apple knows this because they know you're not moving, you're not doing a physical exercise, and they want you to stop and take breath work. And what do people do with that notification, they turn it off. And that's been that way since the Apple Watch Series 2, I believe. So my initial review is why? Why does Whoop think that they're gonna be different? And that's something that I just can't uncover. But besides the point, whether or not I think that I'm going to use it or other people are gonna use it, let's talk about the science. Let's talk about the study that had a bunch of brilliant minds partake in and most notably, and I'm a huge fan of Dr. Andrew Huberman. In Cell Reports Medicine, the study is called Brief Structured Respiration Practices Enhance Mood and Reduce Physiological Arousal. Breath has been well studied and well welcomed into different people's lives, including myself. The book Breath by James Nestor, fantastic. Also Wim Hof breathing. I do those as well. And one thing I've learned through getting more into endurance sports is that my mood and clarity is so much better working on my breathing. And I also use a device called an airwave that I have in my mouth when I'm doing CrossFit workouts. So I do nasal breathing and it makes me feel a sense of calming and just increased happier mood. And that's not by accident. It's just well studied that controlled breathing and these breathing exercises work. But is someone going to stop what they're doing through their workday and immediately do the breathing? Again, Apple has not solved that problem. People turn it off. I don't think so. But let's talk about just because we're not going to do it, what is the true science behind it? And that's something that is covered in this report. And there's a, a few points. What are the possible mechanisms through which voluntary breathing can influence physiology and mood differently than mindfulness meditation? One way is through modulating vagal function. The impact of different breathing techniques on heart physiology has been well established and there's evidence that heart rate variability is a reflection of vagal function, which is why in the stress monitor, they do real-time HRV in relation to heart rate. How they do it exactly, I'm not sure. First Beat Analytics, the Garmin side of things, does go into a bit more. And I think through the Whoop Labs creation of stress monitor, they kind of just metaphorically reinvented the Garmin wheel. Furthermore, breath can also enhance interoceptive processes. Interoception, the sensing and processing of visceral stimuli through the ascending branch of the brain-body axis resulting in the conscious perception of bodily processes, plays a role in emotional experience, self-regulation, decision-making, and consciousness. And then lastly, voluntary breathing exercises can also enhance the general sense of control over one's internal state, contributing to the increase in positive effect observed. And then the too long didn't read of the entire study is in a remotely conducted randomized control trial using WHOOP as the data collector. This was to study the psychophysiological effects of controlled breathwork compared with mindfulness meditation. Breathwork produces greater improvement in mood and reduction in respiratory rate, while both result in reduction in negative emotion, including state anxiety. So, it's immediate intervention. I have a video on my channel talking about how I've used the WHOOP to increase my mental health, to make it better. And I've gone through some very unfortunate times through the passing of my father, through the almost passing three weeks later of my own beautiful dog. And I couldn't have done that without using WHOOP and journaling and doing a bunch of things that 
helped increase my overall mental health as reflected in my heart rate data and my daily HRV reading. So I was doing the work by digging into the data myself and seeing how things changed through my mental health exercises. But my stress monitor score every single day has been much lower because I think through that long-term work and overall intervention into my life has helped limit any sort of stressors that would otherwise trigger the need to do the breath work. And I think therein lies a problem where I'm not 100% fully educated on, and I will fully admit ignorant, but this is just my perception, that these are immediate intervention exercises to do with the stressor in the moment to kind of reclaim control and increase the mood. But I don't believe that this breath work is going to prevent the cause of the stressor in the first place. I feel like we're just treating a symptom in time that caused that increase in the stress monitor rather than us doing all the work beforehand to make sure that stressor doesn't cause the stress in the first place, if you catch what I'm saying. I I think it's good. I think the intent there is good, but my initial review is I'll look at the stress monitor from time to time, but I still haven't fully understood how it's going to play a role into daily readings. Like I don't want my device and that's the beauty of the whoop, right? You don't have a screen on here to constantly look at to really inundate or paralyze me with all the data. Like it's getting to the point now where there's just so much data and I know there's more in the pipeline coming down that it's going to be a bit too much for me, in my opinion, to want to use all of these different functions. So Again, I, I'm not 100% sure how the stress monitor is fully weighting heart rate variability, which I find interesting because Will Ahmed in creating the Whoop had initially stated that HRV can really be gamified and you can really alter its readings. And I guess breath is going to be one of them. So I'm not 100% sure how they're really making the HRV to the heart rate fair. And unless they release the white paper, we're just not going to know. But that's also the same for Garmin, and they use the same kind of data. They use HRV and HR. But that's my initial review. I think some people are going to find it useful. Some people might find it even more annoying. But I I know the intent there for mental health is good. I fully know that through this study, and Andrew Huberman talks about it, that there are great studies that show that physiological sighing, box breathing, cyclic hyperventilation does a body good, it does a brain good, does mental health very well. I just don't know if it's going to be any different than the shortcomings of Apple trying to do the same thing. That's my initial review. That's the, you know, it's pretty cool science that I really am fascinated by. I just don't think this is going to be something that is just going to blow your top off and be so overwhelmingly innovative that's going to change your life. That's just my feedback. Hey, if you have anything different, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support the channel, hit that like button, subscribe if you loved it, and I will see you in the next video.